Okay, so welcome everybody. Our speaker today is Maciej Ososki from our Chair of Relativity. So Maciej is a PhD student is, and he's doing uh, his uh, PhD under supervision of uh, Professor Lewandowski. So Ma Maciej Ososki will, sp uh, uh, talk us, uh, will speak today about singular story of non-singular spacetimes with the NAT para parameter. So you can start. Uh, hello, uh, thank you for the invitation, thank you for the introduction, and uh, yes, I, I want to talk about uh, spacetimes with the NAT parameter and um, singularities that such spacetimes have, but the, let, let me first uh, build up to the whole picture because I want to speak about many different uh, spacetime and I want to add one parameter at the time, so we'll start with something very basic. And let me also uh, uh, state at the beginning that all of the um, uh, space time that I will consider today are uh, satisfy uh, lambda vacuum Einstein equations and uh, are of the Petrov type D. So uh, let us start with something really basic. So uh, with the space time without even a NAT parameter. So just simply with uh, Schwarzschild, the space time. And of course, uh, about Schwarzschild, we, we know most of the things we would like to know. So for example, uh, uh, when we look at this tensor metric, we first notice that there is this function uh, f of r here and it possibly could lead to uh, a singularity at r equal to, to m. Uh, but of course, uh, now we know that uh, such surfers corresponds to uh, simply a killing horizon, not a real curvature singularity. But nevertheless, it took us some time to work out the, the precise solution to this problem. So. Uh, the solution is also quite well known. We use some kind of edit on Pinkerstein-like coordinates. Uh, here I'm doing outgoing, and as we know, we can even uh, make both of those uh, coordinate changes at, at once and cover uh, yeah, the, the black hole part of the black hole and the, and the white hole. So, um, so this is the the, the lesson that. Um, Relativist, I think, learned a long time ago that not everything that looks like a like a like a singularity is actually a, a defect of an underlying manifold. Sometimes it's just a wrong choice of uh, coordinate systems, and perhaps it can be cured by a better choice. And so that will be something that will uh, come back in in my talk today uh, quite many times. Mm. And of course. Uh, some extension of the eddington Finkelstein coordinates would work also if you include, uh, if you change the, the particular form of this function f, so if you include charges, uh, cosmological constant, or even that parameter that I will introduce in a minute. And even some generalization work if we include something like k rotation parameter. So uh, we know how to, how to deal with horizons. So, uh, what other kind of singularities we can encounter? Well, we can actually add the, the NAT parameter. And uh, this metric is, uh, is, is quite similar in form to the, to the Schwarzschild metric. So we also have uh, some function f uh, of r here. It's more complicated form, but if we take the, the limit of l going to zero, we exactly recover uh, the Schwarzschild. And um, probably the, the most striking difference that we notice is this additional term to L cosine theta d phi. And this is a source of, of uh, another type of uh, singularity we can encounter. And uh, it stems from this one form d phi. So the one from d phi uh, it might be not immediately obvious, but as itself, it's, it's not well defined in uh, poles where 
if, if I talk about poles today, I will be talking about uh, uh, theta equal to zero or theta equal to pi. So uh, if we use some, some coordinates better suited to cover the, the, pole, the, the poles, so for example, any kind of a, a projection of a sphere onto the, onto the plane, well, notice that uh, d phi is not well defined uh, there. And uh, the remedy is that we need to multiply by a function that vanishes sufficiently fast when we go to the, to the pole. So that's, for example, why when we have d phi here, it's multiplied by sine uh, of uh, theta, and uh, which, which vanishes uh, fast enough so that we have no singularity here. But the cosine, the cosine of course has the has the opposite uh, behavior, so it uh, it doesn't vanish sufficiently fast. In, in fact, it doesn't vanish at all, and uh, takes value of, of one and minus one at the at the poles. So, um, so so here we have another kind of singularity, uh, making that the poles. Mm, not regular points in the sense that the metric isn't even defined there, or a priori isn't even defined as we take a look at, uh, at this metric tensor. But there's a benefit, uh, immediate benefit to introducing, to adding this additional nut parameter and, uh, uh, and uh, the benefit is uh, such that the R equals zero is no longer a, a curvature singularity. So, uh, and we can see this uh, in actually two separate uh, places in this metric. So, uh, if we take uh, f of uh, zero, then uh, in the Schwarzschild metric, we would get uh, this function blow up. So, we would have infinity in the metric, and this would correspond to curvature singularity. Uh, and here uh, r equals zero is, uh, is is completely regular. This uh, function takes a, a finite value, so that's uh, that's one place. And actually, there's also another place. So um, in this angular part of the metric, if we uh, took r uh, equal to zero, there's a there's a possibility that uh, the angular part of the metric would degenerate. Here it also isn't the, the case because this L squared uh, is a contribution to uh, contribution to the radius of the of the sphere. So uh, perhaps it's, it's not worth to consider such uh, space time if uh, we trade off one singularity for another. But this is of course not the case. Excuse yes. me, has anybody calculated the Kretschmann scalar for that metric? Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> okay, so they will tell us later, I guess. May I, may I, may I have a remark? Mm -hmm. So first yes, of all, yes, please. you cannot say that it's a smooth regulizer of Schwarzschild. That I can say that R equals zero is no longer Sir, uh, so so usually it's it's uh, okay. You can say regularizer, but but it does not mean that r equals zero and perhaps t equals r equal constant r equal zero and t equal constant surface has no singularities. So it has singularities because of this term uh, l cosine theta. So so uh, you know the. This is not a sphere. This is not a sphere. Yes, yes. Uh, this is, this is exactly what I'm what I was going to say now. So, so, so different kind of singularity, I can say, but but it is it is not smooth regularizer. So, so this is my remark. <clears throat> okay. So first of all, the, the Kirchman scalar. Uh, uh, if I may anticipate the question, the question is uh, does not uh, blow up at, at the r equal zero. Uh, I don't know if, it, if that would be the question, but if it would, then uh, the question is is fine at the r equal to zero. And to the second remark, that's uh, yes, that, that's exactly the case. So 
if uh, if it wouldn't be possible to uh, get rid of those uh, singularities at the poles and the axis of the symmetry, then uh, <laughs> we probably wouldn't be talking about this space time. And I wouldn't be calling it a smooth regularizer, but uh, there are uh, there is a particular way, a particular interpretation that allows us to to uh, get rid of this singularity caused by this cosine e phi term. Of course, there are prices to, to pay. Uh, so as you'll see in a moment, there's a topological price to pay. And, uh, but if we uh, could get rid of this uh, singularity, then uh, the tau knot uh, would be something like uh, with a small l would be a, uh, like a space time that's maybe some sense close to the Schwarzschild, then also uh, we have this benefit that it also satisfies the Einstein equations. So here, uh, vacuum Einstein equations. And there are many, uh, there are many interpretations regarding this, um, this uh, singularity at the, at the axis. Uh, perhaps the, the one that doesn't concern us uh, because it actually doesn't cure this singularity, it only interprets it, uh, interprets it as a, uh, so, so one would propose that uh, along this uh, axis of the symmetry, we have a massless uh, source of the angular momentum. So that was one way to deal with it. What we are more interesting uh, is the pro proposal uh, introduced by uh, Misner in uh, 63. So, uh, and this interpretation is, is crucial for the, for the purpose of my talk. And so uh, using some, some clever uh, group theoretic uh, arguments and, and reasonings, he noticed that we can actually uh, introduce two, um, two coordinate changes. So we have this T with circle, T, T naught, and we can introduce T and T prime. And those two uh, changes of, of uh, coordinates have this effect that, uh, that uh, now we don't have a cosine, we have a cosine minus one or a cosine uh, plus one. So this upper, uh, this upper metric test is regular at the point uh, theta uh, at the surface is theta equal to zero, and the the bottom one is uh, regular at the surface is theta equal to to pi. So, uh, is the coefficient yes. at the the coefficient at the angular part? Is it just r square? Oh yes, yes. Sorry, it should be r squared plus <coughs> plus r, uh, l squared here and here also. Yeah, so it is also regularized. It doesn't shrink to zero. At zero, it shrinks to some minimal value, which is not zero. Yes, yes. The, the, this change of coordinates only affects this, uh, this, uh, those parts, those two parts. Uh, so um, we started from something like just coordinates, I, I call them just because they distribute the, uh, the singularity equal be between two, two poles. But by being just, they are perhaps also cruel because, uh, be because the singularity can be removed at no price whatsoever from one of the poles, just simply by taking the coordinate change. And of course, his argument can be, uh, he, he, his proposal to, uh, to making the whole space in a singular can be summarized in this quite nice picture that we take. Uh, we take once one copy of a space time which is non singular at one of the half axis, one uh, copy of space time which is non singular at the other, and we glue them together. And uh, but here comes the catch uh, from that takes uh, that we have to account uh, when using this construction. So uh, when we have a transformation from the map covering the northern pole to the southern pole, it looks something like this. So T is 
d prime minus 4 l uh, phi. But uh, phi is a cyclic coordinate. So it takes values from 1 to 2 pi. And then we, uh, I, we identify those points. So uh, at the same time, we have to identify points that corresponds to uh, t equals 0 and t uh, t equal to 8 pi l, because we have this period from pi to pi and also this term for l. And the same, of course, goes for the, for the coordinate t prime. So if you want to still, uh, still have the, the, the continuous coordinates, we now, uh, we now must uh, require that t is a cyclic, cyclic coordinate. So uh, this is perhaps a, a problem because uh, when you have something like a, a time and uh, it's on a closed loop, it leads, leads to the closed time like curves, which are uh, a nightmare to deal uh, because the space time stops to be uh, hyperbolic and we have some causal problems. Uh, but uh, it's not always the case that uh, those curves uh, corresponding to T would be, uh, would be time-like. So when we, uh, when we consider the, the uh, when we consider the uh, the original metric, uh, we see that uh, the the time translation vector d over dt naught that its norm is actually given by by this term, and uh, this term uh, being a quadratic function. Uh, and having always two real roots, uh, have uh, regions where it's uh, uh, positive and where it's negative. So we have those uh, two regions corresponding to the radius either greater than uh, one of the roots or so one of the horizons and smaller than one of the horizons. And here I should, uh, I should remind that are here because we don't have the singularity at the r equals zero. We actually consider the r to be a, a coordinate on a real line, so from minus to plus infinity. And those regions are called uh, the nut regions. And here, uh, time translation uh, symmetry is time-like, so we will have here time uh, close time-like loops. But we also have this uh, region which is called tau region, and where those curves are not actually time-like. So uh, it would be to define. And uh, it's not a, uh, it's not a um, coincidence that it's called the Taub region because the Taub nut metric was actually originally derived as a uh, cosmological model and was proposed even something like more than 10 years earlier than Newman, Unti, and Tamburino proposed it. As a, as a cosmological model. So uh, we, can, we can see some details about this uh, cosmological model quite, quite easily. So uh, the other thing that we notice is that uh, at the same time when, uh, when d over dt becomes space-like, the coordinate r uh, have some time-like uh, behavior. So uh, now we take the r to be our new uh, cosmic time tau. And uh, something that was time, and now, is, uh, now we wanted to um, parameterize some uh, space-like uh, closed uh, loops. So we, we make it uh, looks, uh, make it into this angle, uh, this, this angle one, have this additional angle uh, psi. And of course, we can uh, we can then, uh, also remove the, the singularity at the horizons, uh, but uh, it's, it's not necessary. It's just uh, enough that we know that the horizons are not singular, and then the the metric can be written uh, in this form, where I have uh, I have taken the, the minus uh, here because uh, the minus uh, minus f of tau 
in this region is actually positive. So uh, the, the, the signature is here minus and here three, three pluses. And this is a uh, homogeneous uh, model because as we, as we take uh, trajectories going from one horizon to another and we, we take, uh, calculate uh, their proper time, they do not depend on the uh, uh, do not depend on the uh, coordinates other than r, but r here is here is the time. So actually, it doesn't depend on the location in, in space time, which is given by those three angles. And uh, by noticing that this integral does not depend on on the other coordinates, we can say that it's a, a homogeneous cosmological model. And uh, furthermore, uh, it's also of the Bianchi type line. So, which for me means that it has a symmetry group of, of uh, SU2. And it also shouldn't come as a surprise, uh, as we will see in a, in a moment. Okay, so uh, next I want to uh, consider uh, uh, consider uh, the, the geometry beneath the the, uh, the Misner non-singular interpretation, and also we uh, beneath the Taub cosmological cosmological interpretation. Mm. Uh, so I want to I want to consider Taub not as a U1 principal bundle. So uh, we take those two metrics which were non-singular at uh, non-singular either at theta equal to zero or theta equal to pi. And then we want to decompose it in a, in a certain way. So, uh, so the blue part would correspond to the, to the metric tensor on a, on a base space here. Mm, I, I would probably use in interchangeably base space and a space of the orbits, depending on I'm talking more about the bundle or, or about the the, the, the Kinnick symmetries. But uh, the base space is R times S S two. So we have this real line connected to this D R term and this uh, sphere-like part here. Uh, Yes, so, um, so we also, for the principal bundle, we also need to have some, uh... <laughs> oh yeah, and, and we want to consider this red term as a, as a uh, connection one form on this, uh, on this bundle. And, uh, uh, the, the fibers, the fibers are actually the orbits of these uh, killing vector d of uh, d over dt. So now, because we have uh, somehow glued together the uh, and made the this coordinate uh, uh, cyclic, the orbits of dt d over dt are actually circles. So uh, that's why you have U1 uh, principal bundle. Uh, and uh, th th that's what I meant when I wrote in the abstract that the, the, the Misner's method basically uh, boils down to, to compactifying the, the orbits of this vector field from the whole real line to the, to the circle. And this, this construction is also crucial for us and I will build up on it. Uh, I'll need in a minute. So uh, let me also uh, show you more explicitly how uh, how the bundle structure works uh, in this tau not metric. So when we discard the uh, this part, when we this the Cartesian product with, with R and only focus on the uh, spherical part of this bundle. This is a well-known uh, structure, and you, you might have seen it, for example, when one considers uh, a Dirac monopole, and 
this is not not, not surprise. So many of these results may be similar to Dirac monopole because tau not is often uh, this not parameter is uh, often considered to be something like a gravitational analog of the uh, magnetic monopole. So we have hot vibration from S3 to S2. And uh, <coughs> uh, there are many, many pretty pictures that one can, uh, one can show concerning this vibration and how this projection actually looks like. <coughs> um, but for us, the most crucial thing is that um, the, the total space S3 is again, uh, is again a Lie, uh, Lie group. So being a Lie group, it admits, uh, it admits some, some distinguished uh, uh, vector fields. So left and right invariance vector fields. Uh, invariant, of course, uh, of, of course, uh, with, with the action of, of the Lie group S3. And uh, in the perhaps quite familiar parameterization uh, of angle of Euler angles, you can write uh, those. Uh, I have written uh, all of the left invariants and one of the right invariants. Of course, there are three right invariant uh, vector fields, and corresponding to to the um, left invariant vector fields are <coughs> and the dual. Uh, left invariant uh, one forms. So I have chosen only those four uh, vector fields because those actually are uh, mm, those actually are the the keying uh, keying vector fields for for tau nan. So we can see that it admits four four symmetries mm, and. Mm, Using those left invariant vector field, uh, left invariant one forms, uh, the Taubman metric takes, uh, I'd say, quite simple form uh, written here below. And uh, the immediate benefit of doing so is that uh, now, because we only use uh, left invariant one forms, which uh, by the virtue of being uh, left invariant are, defi are globally defined on on the S3, uh, this, this, this form makes this metric immediately non-singular everywhere. Uh, so this is perhaps the, the most elegant way to, to see this lack of, of singularity. Excuse me, what's omega zero? Uh, oh yes, uh, omega zero should be something like uh, dr. Thank you. So, uh, so we, we have before I consider this this more general bundle with uh, with Cartesian product of of uh, real line. Okay. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> yes. So so uh, let me finally uh, get uh, most of the parameters to the mix. Uh, so this is the the. Um, the full kernel, uh, the sitter, possibly anti the sitter uh, metric tensor. And, uh, and it shares, uh, first of all, it's written in something like an analog of a, of a Boyer linguist coordinate. So, so the, the, the general form might be familiar to, to you. No, nevertheless, let me uh, tell something about some peculiarities of this. Uh, of this metric. So first of all, uh, this uh, function uh, sigma, this function sigma uh, will generate uh, uh, the, the surfaces where, where this uh, function vanishes correspond to, uh, to curvature singularity. So if we had L equal to zero, this would be simply uh, a curve uh, ring-like Singular, singularity. Now, if L zero is non-singular, uh, perhaps the, the angles at which this uh, this ring appears uh, are uh, different. But uh, but there's also this uh, 
maybe unexpected uh, feature that again uh, inclusion of this tau of, of this NAT parameter regularizes uh, the care metric because if the absolute value of L is greater than, than the absolute value of, of A, then this term does not vanish at all. And so uh, this, the sigma function does not vanish at all. So for uh, L squared greater than A squared, there are no, there, there's no ring-like singularity. So there are some restrictions, like we want this function P to be greater than zero to maintain the Lorentzian signature. And again, we have this behavior, uh, the, the praise that we play for the regularization that uh, the one from A defy, uh, which for the for the curve would be simply sine squared theta uh, defy would be completely regular at both poles. Now we have this uh, term sine squared uh, theta half, which is uh, which is a, a multiple of a cosine theta minus one. So in this form, this metric is, uh, is, is regular at the, at the pole theta equal to zero and singular at theta equal to pi. Uh, we have up to four horizons, up to four clinic horizons, which correspond to the roots of this function Q. This is also something uh, completely analogous, for example, to the behavior of care the sitter where we also have up to four clinic horizons and uh, and similarly we have two clinic vector fields so dt and d phi uh, and again we we want to um, can i can i say something we, yeah go ahead uh, so um uh, i was working on the stop not uh, for some time, uh, let me use Durka from, from this side. Uh, and mm -hmm. I noticed that this uh, NAT parameter have a tendency of like being related to the rotation in the sense that this Misner string seems to be really rotating and at some rate, uh, velo angular velocity, which is constant, like one over two N, depending if it's one string or two strings present. So basically, if you have something which modifies the Kerr ring uh, singularity, then it's not so strange to, to think about it. Uh, when you mention also this killing horizons, I would like to point out that uh, that was Karlip who noticed that, for example, on this string, it also uh, seems that we have uh, maybe some kind of killing horizon because the norm of a ki killing gen this horizon generator is zero there. When you go with the, your angle to the, you know, this value of, of, of uh, theta equal pi, the norm is also zero. Uh, and, and then it seems like there is additional killing vector along this kind of strings. So this is at, at this point, uh, my remarks I, I have uh, later maybe. I, will. Um, I would like to say that I disagree that not parameter has something to do with rotation because not parameter is nothing but the, uh, time component of the dual form for momentum. So it has, because of the group, theoretical group, this is scalar, this, this is nothing. Uh, it, it does not depend on the um, orientation, etc. cetera. So, uh, <clears throat> so not parameter is nothing but the dual mass. Uh, but when you want to, for example, calculate angular velocity, it actually appears. Uh, but angular velocity is not um, okay. It may appear, but but if you look for for while tensor spin to field or whatever, and you want to understand what are the charges of the of the of this gravitational field, that obviously not parameter is a is a dual mass. So, but, but at the same time, you can calculate angular uh, momenta charge, and then it kind of appear in the same manner as, for example, Kerr. Uh, has so mass uh, multiplying curve parameter and in yeah, but this is just just but I am talking about physics. So mm -hmm. so m a is an angular momentum. That's it, you know. But mass is mass. So so you cannot mix them. So that's it. No. <clears throat> 
If I if I may add something, I'm sorry, Panie, Panie Macieju, I'm sorry that we interrupt your talk so much, but but it is Go important. Ahead. So so there are various notions of rotation in physics, and and of course there are those notions in terms of in terms of uh, charges, but but there's also strict geometric notion in in relativity. So we have family of observers and then we can tell whether they are rotating or not. So in this sense, the killing vector DDT defines a family of rotating observers. If, and the rotation is proportional to this parameter L. However, this notion is clear only locally. So locally we can see that rotation, but globally we, are, we can be confused because there is no axis of the rotation and this rotation looks the same from every point on of of uh, of the two spheres so this is a rotation which is which is spherically symmetric so it's very strange rotation but locally certainly there is rotation in the sense that observers cannot synchronize their clocks and there will be some some uh, discrepancy if if they if they try to syn synchronize the clocks yeah, so so I want to say that that, that L this not parameter is spherically symmetric, you know, just that's it. <clears throat> mm. 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 Yes. Okay, so uh, thank you for for those uh, for those remarks. Uh, if I may, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure I understood uh, the, the first thing that you said. Uh, uh, so we have the additional killing horizon along the the the, 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 the singularity along the, the stream. Yeah, th that was something that Karlip uh, showed. Just calculated the uh, uh, the, the killing. Uh, uh, he took this killing horizon definition, and he he noticed that if we if you calculate the norm of a killing vector, which has parts uh, a combination of this. Uh, uh, time uh, and rotational one with uh, some kind of uh, factor. Then he kind of showed that there is a norm which is vanishing, and then due to the definition that the, where the norm of killing uh, generator vanish, there is a killing horizon. I, I can send you in a moment this on a chat maybe. And okay, so from, from I, I don't want to disturb. From our point of view, what happens is that this killing vector itself is zero. So it's not that its norm is zero, but the killing vector in proper coordinates, which is this, those Misner coordinates, the, the killing vector itself vanishes at, at, at theta equals zero. So, so this is this is our interpretation. Well, well like 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 in so the, so so there are those two killing vector two vectors on a group. One is left invariant and one is right invariant. However, at some points they overlap, and if we take the difference between them, then wherever they overlap, the difference is zero. So, 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 so this is our interpretation of, of this. Okay, but, but thank you for those uh, remarks. Please, please send me the, the paper if you can. Okay, uh, so I, I'll try to continue. Uh, so uh, having learned, learned the lessons from the Taubnat case, we want to extend this bundle uh, structure, uh, principal bundle uh, structure to the kernel, uh, the sitter, uh, space times. And again, uh, we look for a suitable uh, decompositions and uh, some suitable objects. So we need we need some uh, kinetic vector psi, which will be the generator of U1 action on the on the space time. We need an analog of a connection one form of this uh, of this principal bundle, uh, some function that has a is, is connected to uh, it, can, it can be seen as, as a lapse function for, for this, this metric. And of course, the, the three dimensional metric tensor on a space of the orbits are on the, or in other words, on the, on the base space of this, of this bundle. And uh, together, those objects will serve us as a, uh, in, in, the, in the suitable decomposition of this, of this space time. So uh, we, we, we take a wild guess uh, when taking uh, when, when looking at the Kernard uh, metric in the in, in the form I, I, I have shown, and we uh, try to um, decompose it similarly to the Taubnat. So this 
dt minus the singular one form serving as a as a connection one form and the rest as a as a uh, metric on the on the base space uh, but here we actually encounter uh, something that wasn't present before so uh, the base space has a conical singularity so uh, so e even after after uh, curing this continuity of the uh, continuity of the of this connection one form there's a still uh, persisting conical singularity on the uh, uh, on the on this angle on this two sphere part of the of the base space. So this is this is something new, um, and another type of, of singularity. And uh, as I will show in in a minute, uh, for this choice, it's removable. For, for this decomposition, it's removable only when some uh, some condition on the function p, which is used in the definition of the metric, is satisfied. So when one of the parameters is, is zero. This is, of course, not something we wanted to do. So we wanted to preserve all of the parameters to be non-zero. So perhaps we need to do some more uh, educated guesses. Uh, so th the first thing we can do is quite standard. We avoid the, the singularity at the, the horizon, the perceived singularity at the horizon. And then we, we introduce, uh, we introduce uh, a more suitable king, uh, king field. So uh, we take use uh, of the fact that this uh, space time has two dimensional uh, king vector algebra. And uh, it will, we actually don't need all of the king vectors. We only interested in the orbits and we interested only in the orbits then all of them can be parameterized so using the, the vectors in this form, when B is some constant, we actually get all of the, all of the orbits, possibly with uh, excluding uh, purely angular, purely angular orbits, but uh, this won't be the problem. And now, now we introduce uh, clinic adopted coordinates, uh, such that they have uh, uh, this kinetic vector field acts nicely on them, so it's one of the of the tau coordinate which will serve uh, as a new time, new, new time like variable, and uh, vanishes on the other coordinates. And this choice has this particular uh, benefit that uh, in, in those coordinates, uh, our kinetic vector field is actually d over d tau. So uh, what about ranges of, of, of those coordinates? Uh, first thing, uh, we know that, uh, we, we know, uh, I, I will show in, in a second that the critical singularity stems from the wrong choice, uh, not of the coordinates per se, but uh, wrong choice of the, of the range of the coordinates. So, uh, as, as of now, we only restrict uh, the defy a coordinate to, to some interval, and we, we anticipate that uh, this missionary construction will require from us that uh, uh, the coordinate which now serves the, per the, the, the role of, of, of time, uh, so the tau or, or, or v, which was introduced uh, uh, before, uh, also takes uh, values in some in some interval. So uh, the, the the picture that the one can uh, use to visualize the the conical singularities is of course that at the poles we don't have the the sphere closing uh, closing smoothly on on itself as we would expect, but we have some 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 kind of a spike. And uh, exactly this spike uh, comes from the, the fact that we chose the, the range of the coordinates not properly. And the, the quite standard method of removing such singularities is to require that uh, the, the ratio of circumference to the radius as we tend to pose uh, is, is to pi, so we recover the, the standard result on, on a sphere. 
And when, when one actually uh, uh, writes down this, this condition, uh, it can be solved. Uh, it can be solved uh, arriving at this continuity condition. And here we are lucky uh, because uh, this condition does not depend on, on the R uh, coordinate. So, uh, so we can remove the, the singularity at the, all of the spheres of, of different radii. Uh, and we do, do so by rescaling the angular coordinate by a suitable suitably chosen uh, value. Okay, so let me tell you something about the uh, solving this continuity condition. So uh, first thing that, that we notice is that for, for the L equal to zero, all killing vectors are fine. <laughs> so all, all choices of B are, are, are fine because uh, here the denominator is simply one and uh, the p the the p function uh, uh, if we discard this uh, middle term which has l in it is is actually symmetric between the poles so this is one of the reasons why uh, you don't usually uh, consider such such conditions and uh, um, so, such constructions because uh, because in the usual space times, uh, which we consider such as such a scare with possibly possibly cosmological constant, uh, all of the uh, all of the uh, vector fields generate non singular geometry. Of course, when L is zero, this is precisely uh, <clears throat> is precisely the same uh, the same cases when we don't actually want to perform any any uh, gluing. So we, we don't want then to compactify the orbits of T. Uh, the other interesting case is when uh, the L is non-zero, so we have some NAT parameter, but either of the parameter vanishes. We actually have seen this, uh, seen this couple of minutes before. Uh, well, when I showed you the first attempt to, to make the kernel distance space time non-singular, the first attempt to the at the bundle decomposition, uh, then the suitable choice is simply the over the t, and the, the adopted killing coordinates are simply the coordinates that uh, we, we began with. But in general, there are two solutions to this uh, to this condition. Two because, uh, of course, because uh, this absolute value that we have, and so in, in general we arrive at some b plus and some b minus and some psi plus and some minus along which we can perform the, uh, the Misner gluing. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that, that's the first step to do so. Uh, the second step is that we actually need a transition map between the, the part that covers one pole and the, and the, the northern pole and the, the southern pole. And we do so using uh, this connection one form as a uh, as a guide as a guide, uh, as a guide. Uh, and uh, we take this we take the the phi part of this one form and as expected it now it, it vanishes uh, it vanishes at one pole and and the the, the second pole it has some non-zero value. And this non-zero value can be precisely um, is precisely the abstraction that we need to to get rid of when we go to the other map covering the other pole. So this is our uh, this is our transition map, and uh, something that I have not explicitly included here is that we actually have two choices. Uh, um, Two choices depending on the on the sign of the uh, of this one minus four lb, but uh, as as I would say in a minute, it doesn't actually matter. So uh, this glut metric now is uh, is, is continuous. So uh, the, the the condition that I showed is actually a continuity condition. Uh, so in, when we do physics, we, we usually want uh, much more than, than continuity. So we ask about smoothness and, and we do it simply by 
inspecting uh, the, the suspicious part of this of this metric uh, by hand, and uh, then can then can see that they're actually smooth. Uh, so so that's nice. Um, to, so, some, uh, something can be also said about the, the horizons. So uh, we defined uh, the notion of a projectively projective non singularity of the horizon, and it's uh, it's when the space of the null generators is non singular. Mm. So uh, this is maybe uh, some a little bit subtle because. Simply as a surface, when you have a non-singular uh, space-time, uh, after all of, the, of after doing all of these constructions, and the the horizon as a surface is is, is a part of non-singular space-time and it's completely fine. But uh, if we want uh, this principal bundle that we used uh, here to respect the the structure of the horizon, so if we want the in the uh, base space S2 to be the space of null horizons, null generators, then, uh, then uh, it's not always the case. It is the case when we use the Keeling vector that uh, develops the, the horizon. So here should be R0 where, where the zero corresponds to the radius of the, of the horizon. So, uh, uh, for this choice of the uh, gluing Kinney vector field, we arrived at this condition for, for lambda, which tells us the, the most important things that tell us is that only uh, only the sitter space time can be and have projective you know, singular horizons. Um, uh, and uh, at most uh, one of these horizons can be non singular exactly exactly the one uh, which uh, radius asymptotically the sitter space time uh, yes yes uh, thank you that that's what I meant to uh, write here uh, only the horizon that the radius of which we use can be non singular and there are some some lesser results such as that uh, it's uh, always that the most uh, mm, either with, with the if the r uh, that's the, the the lowest possible or the greatest possible depending on the on the mm, with, with the change that we can uh, change the mm, using the symmetry reversing the, the signs of the of the r and it's uh, can be shown that it's always non extremal uh, one can also do some cosmology using uh, using our non singular kernel the space times. So, uh, <clears throat> so um, an analogy to the tau uh, cosmological interpretation, we want to ask when um, when there are no time like uh, closed loops. And when uh, <coughs> this dr coordinate you know, will uh, perform the role of a, of a time coordinate. And uh, the additional thing that we can require here, <coughs> in contrary to the top uh, not case, uh, where we always uh, had horizons, is that now, uh, now we, we can avoid it. So this is this is something that Maciej Kolanowski taught, uh, talked about uh, a couple of weeks ago. That uh, of course mm, that, that it, it is possible to choose such parameters that there are no horizon whatsoever, and this perhaps is not uh, surprising as it's uh, this Q is a four four degree uh, polynomial, so there should be such parameters. But there are some restrictions that we had such that. This p function is greater than zero, and there is no curvature singularity, uh, and those conditions can be satisfied. Uh, can be satisfied. That's that's one good thing. Only for the lambda greater than zero, we have this global uh, cosmological interpretation, 
And there, there are some not so pretty inequalities, which uh, perhaps uh, the most uh, one can say that, that the mass has to be suffi sufficiently small, perhaps even, even zero. And uh, this gives us a, a inhomogeneous uh, cosmological model. So inhomogeneous, of course, because we don't have four, uh, four symmetries, we have only, only two. Uh, but the benefit is that, uh, as I said, it's not uh, non-extendable. So uh, from from one infinity to the other, we have, and we have no, of course, no closed time-like curves. So some things that I want to just touch briefly on is that uh, we can actually uh, calculate the geometry of the of the sky and. Uh, it, it will look something like this. The, the conformal factor is uh, absolutely is the same as for the standard curve solution. And here we can explicitly see that uh, explicitly see that um, uh, this geometry this, this has a signature which is uh, the sign of of cosmological constant and plus plus. Uh, another thing that's a little bit strange uh, about this construction is that we uh, we actually raised that two principal King vector fields. So for uh, the, the instructive case for us is to look at Taub knot. So then uh, those two principal King vector fields correspond to to simply uh, left and right invariant vector fields. And in general, and it can be shown that those two vector fields. Uh, define the same orbits, and thus the, the gluing that uh, they define is uh, is equivalent. So there is for a given set of parameters, there is psi plus and psi minus, but uh, the resulting space time is uh, is the same. And here are some pictures that uh, summarize uh, um, most of the, the things that I said. So the, the left one is for the Cosmological constant greater than zero, the right one for the cosmological constant uh, less than zero. And uh, we have the, the global structure of the space time, which is the, the real line times S3. Uh, I have chosen, uh, I have chosen it going down ways or, or, or left uh, side because, because actually the killing uh, the minus d over the r is the future pointing killing vector field for us mm, we have up to four four killing horizons uh, and <clears throat> uh, and the, the the causal structure is um, depicted as a uh, as a as, a, as, a, as those light stones and uh, what we can see is that for the and near the sky, um, uh, near, near the skies for lambda greater than zero, there are no. Uh, in general, there are no uh, closed time-like curves. Uh, in particular, where there are no horizons, there are no uh, closed uh, time-like curves. And uh, the opposite is true. The opposite is true. Uh, for the lambda uh, less than zero, would perhaps give us a hint why uh, a, a minute ago when I talked about this cosmological interpretation, it was required to have uh, lambda greater than zero to avoid the closed timeline curves. So uh, briefly, I want to also introduce uh, another parameter, which is this acceleration parameter making the, the whole uh, space-time uh, accelerated kernel anti the sitter. And uh, in principle, I could have started with, with this metric, but uh, what we can immediately see is that, uh, is that the functions are, are quite lengthy ones, but it's not so bad because we, we also have function P, which is this angular dependence here. We have function Q, which gives us the, the roots. And the, the rest uh, of the formulas on this page are uh, coordinates, are just parameters, so that there are no coordinates here. And 
I, I won't go into the detail about this acceleration uh, and its inter interpretation. In, in the basic case, those space times are called C metrics, and this alpha uh, parameter introduces also introduces uh, the, the conical singularity or uh, uh, and the singular axis. And now it has this interpretation that along the singular axis there is there's a string, and this string has a tension proportional to alpha, and and it's uh, exerting a force on, on our black hole somehow making it uh, accelerating. Uh, the, the good thing about those accelerated uh, space times is that uh, although some functions differ uh, in detail, the, the global form is quite similar. So many of the, of the results are actually uh, hold uh, uh, in, in the same way that it that they hold for uh, for the, the not accelerated space time. So the continuity uh, condition uh, is formally the same with different now with different p. We can in the same way get the, the bundle structure, the gluing, the equivalence of principal vector fields, and possibly some more. Uh, what is uh, what is interesting about and I think what is new about this case. Uh, is that uh, when we consider the space time without L, so simply the accelerated uh, black hole or possibly with cosmological constant or curve, the continuity condition uh, reduces to uh, reduces again to, to something that requires uh, that makes us uh, eliminate one of the parameters. So, the, 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 the obvious choice and the obvious story that one hears about these accelerated space times is that uh, this condition requires us that there is no acceleration. So there is, that there is no way to make uh, those space time uh, non singular. But uh, this is not the case with the accelerated. Uh, if we add the, if we add the, the whole if you add the, the curve parameter and the nut parameter to the to the mix, now uh, this L parameter not only serves as a regularizer of uh, uh, of the curvature singularity, it also somehow regularizes this conical behavior of alpha parameter. Uh, of course, uh, the, the formulas are, are also quite lengthy and perhaps better summarized in this short story which i told you okay so uh that's all from me thank you for your attention so, so thank you very much for the very nice talk and uh, we, we have time for questions so maybe someone would like to ask more questions i've seen there are some some people on chat i don't know if there are some questions okay Okay, so, so maybe I, I have one question. So uh, I understand that uh, all these space times are of type D. Yes? Uh, are, are not yes, time? yes. Yes. Uh, I, I should even mention that uh, this accelerated Kernel uh, Desitter space time, this is the most general uh, type D space time that has uh, black hole uh, behavior. Okay. Well, so everything I I, uh, I considered was type D. Okay, maybe I have a question. Okay, okay. Uh, do you, do you have uh, some uh, application of this uh, fermions to astrophysics or cosmology? I mean, testing something in observation of cosmology or astrophysics? Uh, I don't know about. Testing it explicitly, but uh, I think that, that that this cosmological model that we this cosmological interpretation that we uh, propose is, is it's new. So uh, there were some uh, some uh, attempts to to use Kernat the Sitter space time as a cosmological model, but they didn't uh, actually remove this uh, Kernat singularity. So. Mm, 
I don't know. Uh, we don't have any. Yeah, we don't yet have any uh, any uh, predictions that can be checked. But but uh, this model is new, I think. So maybe maybe we should we should explain better. So it, it, there are those parameters, uh, which is the care parameter, the mass parameter, the NAT parameter, cosmological constant. So if those parameters uh, satisfy some inequalities, then this space time actually doesn't develop any horizon. It doesn't have any singularity. Uh, it doesn't have closed time-like loops. And well, I, I'm not sure whether we, we didn't really study if, if there may be some, some nasty kind of uh, non-globality. However, it, it seems to be, to be, to be, uh, uh, to be uh, <clears throat> defined as, as a complete space-time, which, which goes from minus cry to plus cry. Uh, and uh, orbits of, of time-like vectors are also go from 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 minus cry to plus cry. So so in and and then it it and sections space-like sections are three-dimensional spheres. So so it it can be viewed as a cosmological model of of closed. Universe, which is not homogeneous, which has only two-dimensional symmetry, and uh, well, if we if we if we make those parameters small, then non-homogeneity may be also small. So, so I think we can we can control this non-homogeneity. And what is nice is that this is exact solution. So, so, so maybe it cannot be really used to describe generic uh, cases however uh, however it is still uh, well exact analytic um, and uh, and it seems that that it's uh, much more general than i mean it has those additional it 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 it, it, it is not homogeneous so it, and and so so some properties may may be used to model some kind of non homogeneity so unfortunately, it is so regular that uh, quantization is not needed. Uh, so people uh, who like quantization would be unemployed. Uh, well, it, could be it, it, it could be quantized. So, but for, for which purpose? Hmm? But for which purpose? <laughs> uh, well, this is um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand. So, so in order to. Okay, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. So, so maybe I have one more question about this. Uh, so so uh, you, you said that it's regular. So do you know what are these initial data on the on the sky? So, so you computed the metric, yes? But there is also this uh, trace-free uh, divergence-free uh, tensor that's uh, defining the boundary data. Yes, so those the, that initial data is computable from <laughs> from 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 our solution. I, I, I we, we we as far Pani Maciu, have you have you computed that electric? So 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 this missing part is the electric, electric part yeah. of the vial tensor on on scribe, but but it is computable. So so one can one can compute and and then we will have some. So so this is also nice because usually we know only existence theorems that given some initial data there exists a solution and here we we actually have some nice class to, of, of initial data and along with 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 exact solution they define okay, so so are there other questions So if not, also f thank you again, and I will maybe stop recording and we can still talk, but uh, it will be not recorded. So thank you. Thank you.